Hi everyone, this is Megan Sanicki, the Associate Director of the Drupal Association, and I want to welcome you to today's webinar, Drupal Site Builder Pro Tips. And uh, we're excited to have our technology supporters with us today to talk about um, how they're helping us build better Drupal sites. Uh, we have Brightcove, Kelton, uh, Kelton Tech, Constant Contact, and New Relic with us today. And uh, we're going to get started in just a few, uh, actually just a minute. Uh, we have a lot of people signing up. I just want to give them a chance to uh, you know, finish loading up their control panels and, uh, and, and getting ready to join us. So we'll begin in just a minute. Okay, great. Well, thanks again for joining us. We're going to go ahead and kick off today's webinar. Uh, again, it's Drupal Site Builder Pro Tips that are coming to you from our technology supporters, which include uh, Brightcove, Kelton Tech, Constant Contact, and New Relic. And so we're really excited to have our panelists uh, and guest speakers here today uh, to talk about what they're doing to help uh, our Drupal community build even better sites. Um, so before we get going, we'll just do a little housekeeping. So if you're listening from your computer, uh, you want to make sure that you're selecting the mic and speaker audio option. Um, otherwise, it might be a little challenging to hear. Uh, and also, make sure you're wearing a headset. We do have everyone muted uh, during the call. Uh, but if you do have a question, go ahead and use the question portion of your control panel. And I'll be watching that. So as each presenter speaks, uh, when they're done with their 10 minute portion, I can read the questions, unless it's something really relevant to what they're talking about at that moment. But we, I can read the questions and the presenter will respond. Um, we're not using the chat function today, just one too many portions of the control panel to manage. So just make sure you're using the Q&A window. Uh, and also, there's going to be a post-webinar survey. So uh, please take a, a few seconds just to fill that out. We just always want to know how we've done with our presentations, what kind of content you want to hear next so we can tailor this to your needs. Um, and uh, also, I just wanted to thank you for supporting Drupal Association, attending our webinar. We're uh, doing more and more every year to support the growth of our community and putting programs in place to help all of you become uh, or to keep innovating the project. And uh, so we're using uh, program fees from companies like our technology supporters to do a lot of amazing things. So we're now running three Drupal cons a year. Um, and uh, we are also doing a lot of trainings around the world or coordinating trainings through the Global Training Days program. So it's a real grassroots way of getting more developers uh, and site builders to understand what Drupal is and how to get started in our community and with the, with the project. Uh, we also have community grants that we give out to members of the community that have all kinds of neat ideas for growing the community um, and also just raising the uh, Drupal's profile in the marketplace. So uh, funds have gone to um, marketing roadshows throughout Austria, to a um, Spanish-speaking magazine in Latin America that's talking about Drupal. Um, and lastly, we have been doing a lot, especially this year, really pushing to do more improvements for Drupal.org. So that way your community home is... Um, it's getting better and better, and you have the tools that you need. Uh, it's easier to find modules. So we have a lot coming together um, in terms of Drupal.org improvements. Uh, one of the really big things I want to point out today is that uh, the Drupal.org improvements are being funded by the technology supporters, including the ones you're hearing today. Um, and so I'll talk a little bit more about that. But you can expect a lot of great things happening on Drupal.org this year. Uh, just moving to the next slide, I uh, just wanted to let everyone know that DrupalCon Austin is coming up June 2nd to the 6th, and um, 
this uh, is a great chance to come and learn more about uh, Drupal and what you can do as a site builder, how to expand your skills. And also you can go into the exhibit hall. Our uh, technology supporters that are speaking today are also going to be there sponsoring. So it's a great time to go and get some demos, learn about their new APIs or new ways that they're helping um, our community build better Drupal sites. Uh, February 28th is also our global training days. And so if you know anyone that wants to get involved with Drupal, just go to this um, website, uh, drupal.org slash learn Drupal, and you can um, have them just sign right up and find some training that's close to them. And then uh, also just wanted to kind of plug our next webinar that's coming up at the end of February. And uh, it's our supporting partner, Trellin. And they have a new distribution to help with fundraising. And so this is a, a great tool. If you're doing anything in the nonprofit space, you'll want to check out that webinar. OK, so um, I mentioned the Drupal Technology Supporter Program. So uh, companies like the ones that are speaking today are the ones that are helping to fund the Drupal.org improvements that I mentioned before. And um, these are a collection of software companies that really want to see Drupal flourish. They uh, have uh, invested a lot of energy to make sure that their technology works with ours. And they know that together we can really go out and build some amazing solutions for our clients. Um, and so they wanted to give back to the community by joining the supporter program. And all those fees are going to be helping us um, make these improvements that I talked about. Uh, and just going to the next slide, one of the uh, improvements, oops, sorry if you can go to the slide about the site builder. Oh, I think I just went out of order. I apologize. So the landing page is one of the improvements that we have. Um, we are starting to redesign the content on Drupal.org. And uh, we want to have persona-specific content that really aggregates everything that uh, different types of Drupal community members would need. So today, I know we have a lot of people attending that are site builders. And uh, this is a new landing page that you can take advantage of that aggregates everything and kind of supports that whole life cycle of learning how to become a site builder all the way to contributing back and maintaining modules and uh, it goes on and on. Uh, so it's a really resource rich um, landing page that you might want to check out. It's drupal.org slash site building. Okay, so that is just a little bit about who we are. So let's go ahead and dive into the um, guest speakers and, and what they have to share. So without much ado, I'd like to introduce David Lee from Bright Cove. And uh, he has a wealth of knowledge in, in the tech industry. Uh, you can see he started with Commodore 64. And now he's doing uh, live streaming and videos. So just the, a full gamut there. Uh, and so today, uh, David's going to talk to you about Bright Cove's video cloud. Uh, so, David, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Great. Thank you very much, everybody. And I'm pleased to be here today. And I apologize for the, the uh, dorky looking picture there. Um, but, yeah, uh, as, as noted, I've been programming for quite a long time. Very excited to talk about Drupal. Spent a little bit of time um, working in Drupal in a previous life um, prior to doing video advertising and working at Bright Cove. But um, today, I'm going to talk about. Um, uh, the support that Brightco Video Cloud has for Drupal, um, how the integration works a little bit, and, and show some customer examples. So why don't we go ahead and move to the next slide, please? So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what Video Cloud is, who uses Video Cloud. We'll show you a little bit about um, uh, the Video Cloud module, and we'll talk about what's coming up um, soon with our integration. Go ahead, next. <coughs> Sorry, I have to, do have to cough every once in a while. I'm going to try attempt to get to the mute button as quickly as possible. but. For those of you who haven't seen Video Cloud before, um, Video Cloud is an online video platform where publishers um, and content producers can, uh, as you see down the left-hand side, take their source video content. Um, they can either export that from their digital asset management system or maybe directly out of their content management system where they're creating this content and actually ingest it into um, a video platform. So the ingest can be done through a studio interface. It can be done through batch API, batch XML, excuse me, or it can be done directly via API, which is obviously my favorite method. Um, and so you have a, a number of different ways as content producers to get your source video into Video Cloud. And Video Cloud is a content metadata system. You can see the services that it provides are down kind of in the, in the uh, and apologize, it's a little bit blurry. Uh, but you can, it does things, obviously, in code, encoding to all the different file formats that are needed for playback across desktop, mobile web, native, 
connected TV, all the different app, uh, all the different platforms that are needed. It allows you all, allows you to also to manage the metadata related to that video, organize that content, set ad policies, and monetize that content. Um, design what your experience needs to look like, um, player templating and styling, then obviously distribute and syndicate the content from Video Cloud out to places like Facebook and YouTube automatically. And of course, there's a rich set of reporting um, and analytics that are also available via API uh, for integration into a custom analytics suite if need be. Um, so once you've got that content into Video Cloud, uh, what happens to get it back out? You have a set of video players to publish. You can distribute via MRSS, or you can actually access it programmatically via, via API. And that's, those APIs are what the Drupal module is built upon. So uh, let's go ahead and go to the next slide, please. So I'm going to talk, oh, this did not kind of go the way I thought it was going to go. I thought uh, this had a step-by-step -step through. Um, but I, I'll talk about these use cases. I apologize. These got stacked here. Um, so we have a number over 1,000 customers currently using the Drupal module. Um, some of those, as you can see here at DrupalCon Prague, uh, was uh, broadcast the live keynotes using Video Cloud. That little section you can see underneath the Watch Live is the actual uh, Video Cloud player. You can see things like uh, the information, the social functions on it, the shareability, and the embed code. Um, icons in the top right, those are all customizable. But we have other customers, uh, like the Daily Race and Forum, who are using it um, in an ad-funded model. Uh, we have customers like, well, Brightcove itself uses um, the Drupal module on our own website um, for marketing use cases. We have customers like Digital Classrooms who use um, the module along with Video Cloud um, for an interesting use case where they have a subtitle module down the right hand side that actually uh, um, indexes every single word of the video and so you can skip around, look for a, a key word, um, and then click on it and jump to that point of the video. So there's a tight integration between you know, one or more modules um, that you can install. So let's go ahead and move forward. So this talks a little bit about it. Um, the, we've invested quite a bit in the uh, module. Um, we have a company that is actively maintaining and supporting it, which is called Pronovix. Um, you can see here um, what Brightcove ships with um, is a media API. A media API is basically our kind of server-to-server -server, um, ingestion and advanced mechanism for interacting with all that metadata and all the video URLs and video uh, information that's stored inside a video cloud. So all of the modules, that, um, are, like the Drupal module, are built upon that media API. We also ship, uh, for people that want to use um, that access, we, we ship a wrapper, as it notes here in the first line, a PHP media API wrapper that you can very easily use so you don't have to do the guts of uh, um, you know, the, the uh, API creation uh, using JSON. That is all wrapper and exposed for you. So the Brightcove integration for Drupal 7 has, has some dependencies, as noticed here. Um, it obviously uses the API. It's, it's been around for a number of years at this point, um, and we, we're, it's important to note that we're actively building, actively maintaining uh, this module. It's not something that we've kind of launched. Um, you know, we are putting money into supporting this uh, and making changes um, and expanding this module. Let's go ahead to the next slide, please. So. Uh, exciting developments. We recently posted a blog, as you can see, we made some changes. Uh, we realized that with enterprise customers needing, um, uh, needed an additional level of caching um, in the module, so that's been recently added, um, as well as support for exportables. Um, the other things, that, as you can see here, there are other things that are coming soon, um, so we're also investing in making these fixes and changes to the module. So that, that's, uh, I think that's it. I think that might be my last slide. If you go to the next. Yep, that's it. But, Thank you very much. I pre uh, welcome any questions about Video Cloud or the Drupal module. Yeah, David, this is Megan. Um, I don't see any questions, but I just really wanted to say, you know, a couple of thank yous. One is um, Brightcove's been a long supporter of, of our Drupal cons. And what I love about working with you and your video module is, um, you know, not only is it just great content to have our keynotes streamed live right there on our site, but it's bringing in thousands more people to our website and bringing a lot more visibility to our conferences that way. So it's a really great, um, you know, new kind of feature functionality to bring to your website build. And um, I really love how you highlighted that there's your different integrations that you're even working with community members because so many community members are volunteering time to build modules. That's a lot of work. So by partnering with them, you can help them sustain and keep those 
um, integrations up to date. And that's going to be even more important as we move forward for Drupal 8. And we want to make sure all those modules are ready as we get ready to go live with that new release um, later this year. So I just wanted to say thanks for all your support and, uh, and certainly great technology. Oh, and I do have one um, question for you, David, um, that just came in. Um, the question is, so would content editors upload the video using the Drupal interface, or would they upload um, on an outside Brightcove site? So the module uh, allows you to uh, do the upload directly, uh, as most of our CMS integrations do. Um, but for a kind of enhanced functionality, it kind of simplifies the publishing workflow, but um, for advanced workflow things, there is a chance you might want to, um, users might want to go directly into Video Cloud and use the Studio UI, Studio UI excuse me. Okay. All right. Well, and our attendee says, thank you. I don't see any more questions, so I'll move right on over then to Kel Kelton Tech. And I'd like to introduce uh, Sushil Kumar Tripathi. And he has over eight years in open source technology. He's really passionate about building solutions, especially for Drupal. Uh, and so uh, today, uh, Sushil is going to talk to you about PM user image. And so, uh, Sushil, I'm going to hand this over to you, and you can take it, take it from here. Well, we seem to not have a great connection. Sushil, are you still there? Well, while we're waiting for him to come back online, why don't we move ahead then to uh, Michael Stowe of Constant Contact? Uh, so let me just introduce Michael. And um, so he has a nice long history, very well versed in marketing platforms. But I also just want to point out that he's a real active supporter of the Drupal community. So we're excited to have him here to talk about um, email marketing and Constant Contact's um, Drupal module. So Michael, uh, would you like to take it from here? Yes, thank you, and thank you for that great introduction. Uh, if we could go to the next slide, that'd be fantastic. Uh, so some quick things we're going to talk about, uh, just maximizing customer engagement. Uh, one of my favorite topics is email is not dead, uh, social media effectiveness, and then, of course, constant contact loves Drupal. Uh, so let's go to the next slide, and I'll start with my presentation here, um, which looks like we're missing one. There, but one, one of the questions people say is, okay, I've got this website. What do I do now? And uh, I like to start with saying, okay, you have a website. So what? You know, you guys take time. You've got your Drupal uh, CMS platform installed. You've created this website. You've got a great template. Um, but what does that mean? And the reason I asked that is because when I created my first website, I spent hours on it, and I was so excited. And I went back the next day, and I pulled up the web stats. I had one visitor. It was my mom. Um, you know, having a website is a fantastic platform, but it doesn't do us a lot of good if we can't get people to interact with it, and we don't have people coming back to us and then buying our products or using our services. So one of the things that we really encourage at Constant Contact is that you just don't market. You just don't have the website but find ways to engage your users, find ways to engage your visitors. Uh, and so we like the idea of engagement marketing. And there's a couple different ways we can do that. If you go to the next slide here, uh, you know, we really encourage email marketing newsletters and announcements. And the other day I got an email from somebody who's like, hey, look, you work at Constant Contact. I just want to tell you that email is dead. No one uses email anymore. Why are you guys still marketing this? And it took me a second because he sent me this via email. Uh, and I think in some places there's this idea that you know email is gone, but the reality is how many of us still use email? How many of us still communicate via email? How many of us got a reminder for the webinar via email? Uh, email is still a very, very effective means of communication. And it's still one of the most popular ways to do that. And so it would really encourage people to you know, do email marketing, have people sign up for email lists, stay in contact. The other reason uh, we really encourage email is you know, if somebody comes to your website what if they never come back? You know, what if they like your website, they like the product, but you know they're just busy, uh, they get taken away by life, and they just forget. 
you know, if you have that sign up chat box, you say, hey, you know, sign up for my newsletter, people can sign up and then you can keep them informed. Uh, in fact, the other day I just got an email from a company I haven't visited in over a year saying, hey, look, we have some new products. Would you be interested? And the next thing I know, I'm on their website buying things. But again, that allows you to stay, your know, engagement with the, uh, with the customer or with your visitor. It allows you to stay in communication with them. Another thing, surveys and polls. Um, you know, customers like giving feedback and you want to create a, a means for them to give feedback to you, whether it's a contact us link or a contact us form, or just find out, hey, are we doing a good job? What do you think? What are your views? Uh, you know, even after the webinar, we're going to have a quick survey saying, hey, how are the presenters do? And hopefully everybody will say, you know, that constant contact guy, he was awesome. Uh, if not, shoot me an email and I'll hopefully bribe you guys to say that. Um, we also want you guys to look at using events. You know, it's great to have that online communication. But if you're using your website, you know, for a small business, then you want people to come visit your store. You want people to interact with you. So not just taking and doing all this online marketing, but also saying, hey, let's, let's step up and let's have people come to the store. Let's have an event. Uh, Gail Goodman, our CEO, does a fantastic job uh, talking about engagement marketing. and talking about how, how one lady who owns a uh, kitchen store you would have these cutlery classes and people would come in and they'd try these knives and it was a no pressure, come in, just try it out, but people were so impressed by the knives and all the other products that they'd walk away, you know, spending tons of money because they were engaged. They were able to see what was going on. And last but not least, the buzzword, of course, is social media. And the thing about social media is you can't just put a post on Facebook or send out a tweet and have 10 million followers or 10 million likes, um, you know, it goes back to the old adage of you know, creating an iPhone app. You can't just create the app, throw it in the store, and be a millionaire the next day. It, it takes work. It takes cultivation. And it's a lot of work. Um, you know, part of my job with Constant Contact is managing our uh, Constant Contact API Twitter feed. And it means being engaged every day and finding ways to keep your customers coming back, keep your visitors coming back, and keep them interested. And so we really encourage you with the social media not to just be posting you know, relevant data, but also be sharing things that are important about your company, engaging your customers, trying to find ways to have people sign up for your mailing list through social media, finding ways to share your events through social media, offering uh, sweepstakes, um, you know, getting feedback through all these means. And so I, I guess what I'm really encouraging is take a look at how you can do more with your website and not just build the website, but find ways to encourage people to use it and find ways to turn you know, visitors into relationships. Uh, find ways to take a SAG visitor and turn it into a caged customer. Now, if only there was something that would do that. If we go to the next slide, please. I mean, if only there was one solution that could take care of all these things that would allow you to do, do email marketing, allow you to do surveys, allow you to you know, hold events and have people register events, and allow you to tie all of this into social media as well. If only you could send out an email campaign and then like seamlessly put it on Twitter and Facebook or create an event and e uh, seamlessly email the individuals the information about the event. Uh, oh yes, there, there is, it's, it's constant contact. We do do all these, uh, we do offer this as a nice service. Uh, and the reason we do this, we try to make it more convenient so you don't have to use a whole bunch of different services that don't really play well together to accomplish this, but have everything in one single place. Uh, but again, that's fantastic, but we kind of need a Drupal module for that. So if we go to the next slide. So if only there was, and wait, there is a Drupal module. Not that I'm encouraging people to download and use it, but you totally should. If you go to drupal.org, search for the constant contact module, you'll find it. It's a great module. It handles tons of different things. You can add a sign-up checkbox when people register for your site. You can add uh, multiple custom sign-up forms to any page or sidebar on your site. Uh, you can actually manage your lists from within, or within Drupal. So you can add, edit, and delete contacts. Um, there's just a lot of different features you can do with it. You can create custom fields. Uh, and then it also integrates with the web form for constant contact. So I mean, there's lots of different things you can do with it to really give you control within uh, Drupal to manage your list and really get this engagement. And at the same time, we are really focused on trying to support the Drupal community. And we're, we're going to take a big step here to see a lot more Drupal modules coming out and a lot more functionality to support these different features because we really want to really give you guys the best tools that we can. Uh, and then I'll go to the last slide. Um, you know, to recap that the big things here, uh, first of all, if you guys would follow me on Twitter, that's awesome. We'll have lots of updates on what we're doing with Drupal. Uh, we're going to be at a lot of Drupal events as well. Uh, if you haven't used Constant Contact, you're like, hey, should I be using this? Do I want to try it out? 
We have a free 60-day trial. You go to constantcontact.com, no credit card information required. Feel free to try it out. You can send out a sample newsletter. You can try out our events module. Do a lot of really cool things with that. Uh, and then, of course, you know, as you're using Drupal, install the module and use it with your account. And by doing these three things, and just these three things, I believe that you can truly save the world. Um, so that's my quick spiel. Uh, thank you guys for uh, listening and for attending the webinar today. Well, thank you, Michael. I, I'm sure you can save the world by doing those three things. I think that's a good, <laughs> good simple step. Um, but I wanted to um, point out just a few things that you mentioned that I thought were pretty notable. One is, you know, as we're building sites for clients, um, you know, it's not just a matter of just picking modules and features, but also understanding what, what their business needs are and uh, building the solution that's right for them. So I really like how you talked about like marketing platform best practices, like what's really happening with email and how to support that as well as social media. And because um, and it helps people understand just how Constant Contact is uh, able to support those, those business needs. And um, I think that's really, really valuable for people to understand as they're um, selecting one module over the other. Um, and so I really appreciate you going to that level of detail. And then the other thing, too, is I actually had a chance to go and check out your module page. And I thought uh, it was incredibly useful. It was really well written. Um, you know, you took a lot of care into explaining what that module supports and all the features and what people need to do to get started. Uh, so I just thought that was pretty notable that you took that time to make it so easy for people to understand where to begin with your module. Uh, and also, you made it really easy to find you, too. So, so I'm sure people want to reach out to you and ask you some questions. Um, I currently don't see any coming. Oh, here's a question right, right now for you. Um, so can you explain, uh, Michael, uh, what version Constant Contact supports? Um, one person is saying that they thought it was supported back in 2012, but perhaps there's a, a newer version. Uh, so yeah, the uh, short answer to that question is uh, regarding the module, it's actually built by a third party. Mm -hmm. um, and so we don't actively support that module, uh, but I believe it does support uh, Drupal 7. I think the last update to that was in uh, May of 2013. Uh, as for Drupal 8, we are actually working on getting some more modules out there. Uh, we're building one of our own modules that will offer a lot of support and will support Drupal 8 uh, as well as some previous back versions. Well, that's great. And as soon as that information is ready, let us know and we can push that out to um, our attendees here at the webinar and uh, out into the community. And of course, that goes for all of our partners. Just want to keep yeah. getting that information out there and up to date. We'll, we'll definitely do that. And, and again, people want to follow us on Twitter too. We're going to have a lot of uh, updates coming with Drupal and we'll be posting those uh, on our tech blog and then also via uh, Twitter. Great. Okay, good. Well, I don't see any other questions, so then I will, um, oh, I'm sorry, there. Oh, okay, I, it looks like that, um, that uh, also this is an opportunity for someone to get involved with that module to help maintain it, that they're looking for some more support for maintaining the module. So, um, you know, this is also a good opportunity to connect with the community to make sure that, um, Michael, that, you know, any way we can help you find someone to really maintain that or take it to the next level. Um, let us know if there's anyone on the call that's interested in getting more involved. Uh, you can contact me, you can contact Michael, and, and uh, we, can, we can take it from there. All right. So... Um, the next uh, presenter today is Christine Sotello from New Relic, and um, she is an expert in application performance management. And today she's going to talk about how New Relic is here to make your life easier. So, Christine, go ahead and take it from here. Thank you, Megan, um, and, and thank you everyone who, who's on the call. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to talk a little bit about New Relic and how we support uh, Drupal. Um, so just to kind of give you an intro to New Relic, uh, New Relic is an application performance manager, management tool. Um, so we're, perform we're monitoring the performance of web applications. Uh, we support over seven languages, so we have .NET, Java, Ruby, PHP, Python, and we just added Node.js. Um, and with that comes several frameworks that we support, so Rails, JBoss, um, 
et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but we do have a special place in our hearts for Drupal, and we've actually built in Drupal monitoring into our uh, New Relic UI. Um, and so that's basically what I want to come and talk about today. Um, in addition to application web application monitoring, we do uh, also mobile application monitoring, uh, server monitoring, and we've also launched a platform plugin central for uh, extensions via plugins that are downloadable for free. So. Um, that's just a little bit about New Relic. Um, you can go to the next slide. Oh yeah, <laughs> so here's my talking points. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about New Relic. Um, as I mentioned, we do support um, performance mon monitoring for PHP applications. Um, and with that monitoring comes you know, an overview of how your application is performing, both on the server side as well as on the browser side, um, geography of where customers are located, error rates, we have alerting capabilities. Um, and we also dive deep into the code level visibility with transaction traces. So you're getting information um, on your SQL call details, explain plans, and full stack traces. So you'll see Drupal um, support coming through those different areas. Um, but also, we kind of give a deep dive into um, how your modules, hooks, and views are performing. Um, so with that kind of deep dive, you're, you're getting call times, call counts, and, and a lot more details. So uh, if you go ahead and advance to the next slide, I'll uh, yeah, I'll show you a little bit of how it works here. So um, right now we're looking at the new Relic interface. Um, you can see that um, there's several different tabs, our overview, our app maps to show you how your applications are talking to each other, web transactions. Um, and then, as I mentioned, right here built in, you have Drupal support, um, and we're looking at you know our top five modules by response time that are taking the longest. Um, so we're giving you kind of the details on which modules, uh, you know, are are actually affecting the performance of your application and, and, and allows you to drill into those modules and, and see why exactly uh, those might be time consuming. Um, and you can advance to the next slide. Um, so yeah, here you also see uh, we're providing the same kind of level of details for your, your hooks that you're using um, and how time consuming these are as well and we allow you to drill into each of these um, hooks as well. So for us at New Relic, we have a, a special dedication to Drupal. Um, we know that you know being able to provide you the ability to monitor um, your Drupal modules it gives you the insight into the performance impact of your modules. Um, and the same thing with, with hooks. We know that hooks are the, the currency of the Drupal API, um, so it makes Drupal the extensible system that it is today, and, and being able to provide you metrics into those hooks, it's extremely helpful for you, especially if you're writing your own modules. Um, and then, um, I didn't put the slide here, but we also provide the same level of details into your view metrics. So, your, like database views, Drupal views are you know a great way to create reusable segments um, of data based on a set of criteria, um, and we know that they're kind of reused throughout your application, and so we want to be able to give you some sort of consistency on and and how to, how these are performing and how they affect your application. Um, and in addition to this, we also provide function profiling. So New Relic also provides um, you know the top 50 most frequently called functions and the 50 slowest functions for the uh, individual web web requests. Um, so that's just kind of a, an overview on how we can help you and how, how we can help you with your Drupal applications and, and the performance of those. Um, New Relic, I'll just mention that with versions uh, 3 and higher, New Relic automatically starts collecting your Drupal metrics. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, we have a strong dedication to uh, Drupal applications. So once Drupal 8 rolls out, we'll be right there to, to support that as well. Um, so, so that's pretty much, I think that's it for me. If you advance to the next slide. So that's kind of, that's it for me. Well, that's great. It's, um, you know, I want to thank you. Uh, New Relic has been a long-term partner with the Drupal Association, and you've been uh, great supporters from both a technology standpoint, but also coming to all of our Drupal cons and educating our community on how to use your tool and uh, how to improve performance. Um, and so uh, I think this was a really great, uh, snapshot into what you can do for our site builders and how you can really help them and also the user experience, right? And um, But you'll be at DrupalCon Austin and exhibiting there as well. So it's a great chance for the community to engage and get an even deeper understanding of, of what um, 
your technology can do for them. Uh, and I don't see any questions coming through. Does anyone have any uh, new relic questions? Okay, Christine. Well, thank you very much. I'm going to try one more time getting um, Sushil from Kelton Tech on. He um, was having some problems earlier. So, Sushil, if you can hear me, are you able to present now? Yeah, Megan, I can oh. hear you. Oh, great. Okay. Well, listen, let me just introduce you real fast. Um, Sue Shills with Kelton Tech and has over eight years of um, open source experience, really passionate about Drupal. And today he wants to talk to you about PM user image. So Sue Shill, I will just hand over the presentation to you. When you need a slide advanced, just let Stephanie know. Okay. All right. So, okay. Next slide, please. Um, okay, so here like uh, we'll discuss like Google image sitemap and uh, uh, second module is like PM user image that, that we have built. Um, so uh, next slide please there. Okay, so uh, okay I think like the, the animation that, that was in this slide is not working like okay. So l let me explain like uh, on the uh, Google image sitemap first. So Google image sitemap is like okay uh, for the uh, for your um, SEO thing uh, as you do the SEO for your content on uh, Google so in the same way we do uh, the SEO for uh, images on the Google so in the Google image search your uh, uh, your content your images can be searched like okay with the tags and all those things so for that actually we created the Google image sitemap. So you can read on the Google Webmaster about the Google image sitemap and uh, so there you need to go uh, and download our Google image sitemap module uh, from Drupal.org and you just enable it and configure it like okay uh, how many uh, nodes has to go into the Google image sitemap so it will fetch the uh, Google Im uh, the images uh, from the image field of your content types and will create a sitemap for that that can be submitted to the Google Webmaster tool and your images will be searchable on Google okay and the second site uh, second this you can see like okay uh, the PM uh, user image module so this is the demo for the PM user image module so it works with the private messages so in the private messages when you are trying to create a new message okay so there if you are like okay uh, selecting the people like okay whom you want to send the messages so in private message module only like the Drupal user names used to come in the auto suggestions and uh, it is very difficult to uh, many times to identify the person whom you are sending the message uh, with the Google uh, with the Drupal uh, username so we thought like okay we it should be like more intuitive and what we actually did we created this module so that when you do the you type you start typing the uh, name of the Drupal user so it comes with the suggestion with the image of that user also so you can see as you can see here uh, when you type S so it is coming like okay, okay all the users with S and with their picture also so using this you can actually make it more intuitive the uh, private messages module and uh, this will work like really good so uh, definitely the client uh, for whom we worked uh, actually was very impressed with this thing so you can actually add in your uh, websites also like uh, to have a like better user experience so I think that's it from our side. Well, that's fantastic. And so uh, did I understand that you worked with a client uh, to build this and then you donated it back to the community? Yes, yes. So all these actually like whenever like any uh, uh, anything comes to us, like suppose we need to build something there uh, for a client. So we take the permission of the client and donate it to back to the community. Well, I think that's wonderful. I mean, it's a great way to um, not just expand and innovate the project by giving back, but you're also showing the client that they're part of this um, open source project and 
kind of sharing those values. And uh, this is one of the ways that we just really drive great innovation through new modules. Uh, uh, so I'm really excited that you presented that today. And um, I know you'll be at DrupalCon Austin as well. Are you going to be uh, demoing this and sharing more of this in your other modules um, at your booth at DrupalCon yeah. Austin? Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me just check our questions here. I think we've answered all of them. Well, I think we just covered some really interesting different types of technologies um, that help us uh, improve the way we build Drupal sites and um, augment our solutions for our clients. And uh, through this presentation, you're all getting contact information directly with the different companies. So if you have questions or want to know more about their module and, and maintenance for that module or how they're getting ready for Drupal 8, you know, feel free to reach out to them directly. And we're going to follow up with an email with their contact information as well. If you have any other questions um, for the group, um, you can send them to me directly at megan at association.drupal.org. And I can make sure they get out to the presenters as well and uh, that you get a response. So in the meantime, um, since I don't see other questions coming in, I'll go ahead and close this out. Um, just a reminder, I made several mentions of DrupalCon Austin, but if you're able to make it, please come. It's a great educational event, great opportunity to meet and uh, meet with the other community members, learn about uh, the different technologies that integrate with Drupal. Um, and we have global training days, and this is a great chance for you to send your friends who want to get to know about Drupal to um, some intro to Drupal classes that are free or near free. And uh, so if you're in the nonprofit space looking for some uh, a distribution to help you with fundraising and um, other advocacy work, uh, please join us uh, for our next webinar with Trellin at the end of the month. Um, and going to the next slide, I just wanted to let you know that a lot of these programs are funded by our technology supporters, like the ones who presented today. But uh, if you really like this uh, type of education through this webinar or the other works that we're doing and you'd like to contribute, we do have an organization membership program. So if your company wants to donate $200, um, you can become an organization member, but if you as an individual would like to give back, we have the individual member program. That's $30 for the year. And um, you can just sign up by going to association.drupal.org slash membership. And again, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you to all the presenters for preparing the great content. And, um, and good luck and Drupal on. Thanks, everybody.